Welcome. This is a one hour, 15 minute cell biology lecture squished down to 10 minutes that focuses on tested material. And in this third lecture, we cover the basics of the cytoskeleton. Now, when thinking about what it does or what it is, think of bones, cables, and muscle. Bones in terms of structure and support, uh, cables for intracellular transport, and spatial organization and muscle for contractility and motility. Now these are fluorescent antibody uh, images of microfilaments here, microtubules here, and intermediate filaments here. Notice that the microfilaments are mostly on the outside of the cell or close to the outside. Microtubules are, they converge in the center and intermediate filaments are just random and all over the place. Microfilaments are flexible and helical, which means that they're like strands of a rope woven together like a braid. They're the smallest fibers. Microtubules are the largest fibers and they're like stiff, hollow tubes. Intermediate filaments are like tough ropes and they are of medium size. We'll first talk about microtubules here. Uh, they are assembled in a very specific order. Now they have two pieces that are stuck together, so it's called heterodimeric. The alpha is the negative and beta is the positive. Why they chose these specific symbols uh, is probably random, but it gets assembled by this green part right here is the part that wants a microtubule. Then you have a uh, gamma subunit over here it will attach to uh, and and start as a it'll be a starting point the alpha subunit will attach to the gamma and the beta sticks out now the beta is known for its gtpa's activity which means it hydrolyzes the energy molecule gtp guanosine triphosphate and they will start building one on top of each other from alpha to beta, alpha to beta, alpha to beta, alpha to beta, and it zips up like this. So uh, you can look up other videos for, you know, specifics if it's hard to imagine, but it's it's just basic. And then intracellular transport, which means how are these tubes used in transporting material? You have dynein and kinesin. The dynein will go toward the center of the cell or the centrosome in the negative direction, remember, toward the alpha subunit, which is, you know, the first one that attaches. And kinesin will go to the plus end, which is the beta subunit, or in the direction that the tubule is getting assembled. So dynein hops doing power strokes. So these pieces here, or this, will flex this way like that and it'll hop like a rabbit over here you would say that it's retrograde transport or inward and kinesin walks like a model on the catwalk uh, one foot in front of the other and it'll go in the anterograde direction now the centrosome is the center of where um, you might have seen those two things that look like churro pieces at 90 degree angles of each other in a cell. It looks like this. This is where the microtubules come from. The microtubule organization center is where two of these meet, you know, 90 degrees from each other. And they're surrounded by this pericentriolar material, which is believed to be the source of where those alpha and beta subunits come from. So you could say it's the source. And microtubule associated proteins are these little proteins that attach to the side of the tube and they make sure that things get zipped up the right way. Uh, that's the best way to think about it. And that's really all. Um, most teachers will not test you in greater depth than this. So we move on to the intermediate filaments. You have these strands typically of keratin which is stuff in your hair your skin your fingernails and you have monomers dimers tetramers so like notice that the monomer is just a single strand dimers are spun together 
and tetramers are where these dimers start grouping and then you just have a lot more of these strands um, they are for resisting getting stretched or uh, tensile forces they're like ropes they're found in desmosomes and hemidesmosomes which are like the velcro of cells uh, cells need to stay attached to each other or to their environments they probably don't want to be floating around in your blood so you have let's let's say this is a cell or some membrane you'll have these intermediate filaments extending into a basement membrane or into another cell you know with its own intermediate filaments and they're just attached to each other like velcro this is uh, the most boring of the three now we move to microfilaments which have the most um, information and testable material microfilaments are mostly uh, known for motility in muscles, sperm, uh, they have an ATPase head and they are associated with the proteins actin and myosin. So actin, you have these little globules of actin monomers, you know, they're like little balls and they will start to stick together and they make a seed strand over here. Now when in a high actin monomer concentration, you'll you will see growth in what is known as the plus direction and slow growth in the minus direction. When you start to lower the monomer concentration, the growth slows on this side and there is no growth on this side. As you lower the monomer concentration, growth slows down on this side again and this one will have pieces falling off. And then once you get to a certain point, you will have one monomer add on to this end and one dissociate from this end and it, it causes the treadmill effect. This is an essay question that you will probably get. So be able to describe this, okay? All right, so there are actin binding proteins which allow these little globular balls of protein to perform different functions. So an actin binding protein can nucleate or cause the actin to congregate into a small area. They can cap, so the proteins will bind to the ends of strands and prevent further growth or dissociation from the end. So it's, it says, hey, you're long enough. Sequestering, the proteins can bind to actin and these proteins may have activities that cause these actin pieces to start to move toward a specific area of the cell. Polymerizing is just to form chains. Cross-linking is when you take the chains, you break them a little bit and you you bind them in different angles to make cross-links over here. Um, these actin binding proteins can bundle polymerized cells or strands together. They can sever some strands. They can bind actin strands to a membrane and they can depolymerize them. Now myosin is what is mostly talked about when you're talking about muscles. So there's type 2 myosin which are bipolar filaments meaning tail to tail and they do power strokes much like dynein but uh, they use ATP not GTP and um, they just pull they pull on both ends and um, since this is not an exercise science class you probably will not be tested too much on muscles and myosin type 5 is where it acts very much like dynein where you have this vesicle right here and this myosin will bend this way and will cause a hopping or a walking type motion um, that's really all there is to it so Please like and subscribe for more content and good luck with your studies. Have a nice day.